We probably won't see Josh Zepps on Rogan's podcast for a while. What is this? There's an adverse risk associated with the vaccine. Is Man, is, is it literally just all vaccine shit now? I, I would get bored. If I was an anti-vaxxer and I had some content creators who like fell into that, I, at first I'd be like, woo, my views are being represented. But it's been months and it feels like that's the only shit they talk about. Like, like find something, like something, Jesus. It's like yes. a two to four fold increase in the um, instances of myocarditis. Yes, but you know what? The, hospitalization. You know that there's COVID. an increased risk of myocarditis in among that age cohort from getting COVID as well, which exceeds the risk of myocarditis from the vaccine. I don't think that's true. I don't think it it's is. true. I don't. No, no, no. I don't think it's true that there's an increased risk of myocarditis from people catching COVID that are young versus increased risk of myocarditis from the vaccine. No, there is. There's both. Pro well, let's look that up because I don't think that's true. <laughs> There's both. Myocarditis is more common after COVID-19 infection than vaccination. But is this with children? He, like, this is, this is why it's so bullshit that people treat Joe Rogan like he's just some, like, dumb, like, oh, he'll listen to any idea. He clearly has his bias here and he's not listening to contrary evidence. Uh, oh, here's, like, an article saying exactly what the guy said. Uh, was this in babies? Who the fuck knows if it's in... What are, what are we talking about? Uh, yeah, we're talking about young people. Men and boys aged under 30 after this is what it says here. With, with children is the issue. Now, well, no, oh, we... no, children now. Oh, well, ch that's what we were talking about from the start. Children? Uh, what, 10? Like, you find something for 10-year-olds and it's like, uh... It's like, well, what about two-year-olds? What about the two-year-olds? We're talking about 15-year-olds. Well, we're talking about young children. Male so, child. Yes, 12 to 17. 12 to 17, more likely to develop myocarditis within three months of catching COVID at a rate of 450 cases per million infection. This compares to 67 cases of myocarditis there. per million at the same time following their second dose of five, Pfizer. Yeah, so you're about eight times likely to get myocarditis from getting COVID than from getting the vaccine. That's interesting. Now, that, that is said, not what I've read before, but also it's like, when, even when we're reading these things, it's like, what are we getting this from? Is this from well, the literally, God, he never, he never pushes back and shit. Uh, well, where is this scientific data from? Like you fucking, like Jesus Christ. Like, like the the information disagrees with the Instagram messages that he saw before. So now he's like, well, can we really trust this this medical research? You know, that's not what I've read in my Facebook. Well, VARES report, but even from the VARES reports, when they report this stuff, it's like the amount of people that report. VARES reports aren't data used in vaccine research to determine the propensity of different. VARES is self-reported. The, according to VARES, uh, the vaccine causes people to to lose their keys, but then later find them under the couch the next day. It causes their dog to start coughing. You can put anything on VARES, anything at all. You can get the vaccine and just like, stub your toe and then wake up the next morning with like a purple toenail and put that on VARES. You can do anything. VARES data is not... No, nobody uses VARES to report COVID symptoms, so there's not a fair comparison there. VARES is vaccine-averse reporting. What would you be comparing that data set to? You're comparing VARES reports for the vaccine versus actual studies on, the, on COVID? Jesus. Moron. Three times the viewership of Tucker Carlson. Most viewed media figure, basically. The, um, like, it's the underreporting... God, that's not true. Sees evidence true. What about for children? Sees evidence true for children. How can we trust the source? Source is new scientist pulled up by his own staffer. Well, that's not what I read before. God, it's so frustrating, man. I've said this before, but for Rogan young is boys the in particular, there's an ad. Stuff. He hardcore virtue signaled about um about not caring about COVID when apparently he was like um sanitizing all of the surfaces in his studio you know like he would make fun of people for wearing masks but back at his studio he was fastidiously getting his employees to clean everything down he's so obsessed with being the alpha tough guy after decades of compensating for being four foot three that he can't like break it for a minute to let like medical experts talk about medical problems you know jesus fucking christ nor like he'll he'll hear some like alt-right conspiracy adjacent shit and he'll go like oh that's interesting and he'll see like scientific data 
on this subject, and he'll be like, well, I don't know if we can trust the new scientist. Oh, hold on. Rogan's Roganing. If anyone was going to make me look dumb on the podcast, I'm glad it's Josh Zepps because I love him is awesome. Just to be clear, by the way, Josh Zepps didn't make Rogan look dumb. Rogan said something that was factually, empirically disprovable, and Josh Zepps had in his possession evidence to that fact. And then Joe Rogan, if he wanted to look good, Joe Rogan could have just changed his mind right there. He, keep that in mind. If Joe Rogan had said, oh, is that true? I didn't think that was true. Oh, wow. That would have been the end of it right there. In fact, that would have been a good credit to him, you know? Thank you, Josh Epps, for telling him that. Now Joe Rogan knows that, you know? Okay, but instead he's like, where's this data from? Was, uh, children? What about, what about people six months old? Huh? Like, just this obsessive, you know, bias towards not changing his mind because, hey, he's got a ton of anti-vaxxers in his audience. Or there's an adverse risk associated. So he says, this is why I was confused. Oh, wait, here. Boys more at risk from boys more at risk from Pfizer jab side effect than COVID studies uh, suggests study. U.S. researchers say teenagers are more likely to get vaccine related myocarditis than end up in hospital with COVID. What? This is a different point. More likely to get vaccine related myocarditis than to end up in the hospital with COVID, not. Vaccine-related myocarditis versus COVID-caused myocarditis. Did he just find like a random article? Is this? Did he misremember its contents? Let me see. Their analysis of medical data suggests that boys aged 12 to 15 with no underlying medical conditions are four to six times more likely to be diagnosed with vaccine-related myocarditis than ending up in hospital with COVID over a four-month period. Well, yeah, I think that uh hospitalization rates for covid for people ages 12 to 15 are like are like nothing like 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 practically zero i think that like very young people are essentially they're not immune of course but i mean they're very very resistant um yeah so this isn't even the same data uh Check Rogan's tweet. He posted a substack to prove that he was right. Oh my god. That video is cringy, but it's what happens when you stumble into a long-form podcast when you didn't know a subject was going to come up and you wing it. Didn't he bring it up? Two to four. Or there's an adverse risk associated with the vaccine. It's like yes. a two to four fold increase in the um, instances of myocarditis. Okay, I don't have context before this begins, but I'm almost certain he brought it up. The way that the other guy, Zepps, is saying yes, makes it sound like this is a point that he's bringing up in advance, and Zepps is reacting to it. And then as Zepps continues, it sounds like it's the first time he's responding to it. Yes, but you know what? The, hospitalization you know that there's COVID. an increased risk of myocarditis in, among that age cohort. From See, you know that it just... Okay, I could be totally wrong because I don't care enough to go back and like look through the fucking Spotify archive or whatever. But it, 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 it seems like Joe brought this up. So this doesn't have anything to do with... For, also, the idea that Joe Rogan didn't know that vaccine side effects would come up when that's all he's been fucking talking about for months is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, dude, my name's Joe Rogan and I was just totally blindsided when people on the Joe Rogan experience began to talk about vaccine side effects it was really quite a shock to me as someone who rarely discusses that particular subject this is a substack article in the nature medicine paper revisited okay so now we're on a substack article fantastic uk now reports myocarditis stratified by age and sex after vaccine or sars cov 2 nature medicine paper revisited and it is shocking all right first let's take a look at this guy He is a hematologist, oncologist, and health researcher, associate professor at UC San Francisco. All right, I don't see anything. Uh, oh, hold on. He's got a YouTube channel. A popular one, too. And hold on. He looks kind of like Mr. Girl. That's very unfair, but the lighting, the setup, and the mic placement uh, do, do uh, bear resemblance. A very popular channel. Oh, God, he's more of a YouTuber. CDC pushes a flawed analysis, boosting kids 12 to 17. 
Is this a pandemic of the unvaccinated? Is that framing helpful? A doctor reflects. Um, college campus restrictions have reached peak madness. Ooh, this looks pretty sussy. This whole third, half a million views three weeks ago? This guy is making a lot of money and getting a lot of attention. It seems uh, complaining about... So we're looking at a Substack article of a, of a doctor who's a YouTuber whose wanna... entire channel, it seems, is dedicated to talking about lockdown madness. Here's his site. Books, papers, popular writing, speaking, podcast. Looks like algorithm fuckery. There are anti-vaxxers are exploding right now. It is such a it is a bull market for anti-vaxxers. Views and reception. In October 2021, Prasad prompted social media controversy when he published a blog post comparing the U.S. COVID-19 pandemic restriction to the beginnings of Hitler's Third Reich. There we go. So that so this is whose substack we're currently looking at. So the so I'm just going to be forthcoming. The fact that they would say something this stupid and this politically motivated makes me comfortable immediately disregarding anything and everything they have to say, even if it pertains to their medical expertise. Though it is worth pointing out that they are a hematologist oncologist, not an epidemiologist. This is about blood and cancer, right? Yeah, blood and cancer. Uh, that is not the same field. It's important to remember that medical uh, science is so precisely specialized uh, that a person who is a hematologist, oncologist, can safely be said to not be an expert on others. He's also an associate professor of epidemiology and biostatistics. Well, never mind. Is it here? Wait, it doesn't show up here on the Wikipedia page. Ah, here, I see, on USCF. Associate Professor Epidemiology and Biostatistics. Interesting that it wasn't on the Wikipedia page. I wonder if that's like a recent thing? No, whatever. Um, I'm comfortable discrediting him anyway. Uh, anyway, let's see. This was the key figure of a Nature Medicine paper published on December 14th, 2021. Wait, hold on. Joe Rogan says that he was confused by this paper from The Guardian, geez, shut up, which was released back on the 10th of September. But this substack was released right after Christmas. It's like uh, two weeks old, basically, or three. So which was it? Was it both? Hmm. This was the key figure in a Nature Medicine paper published on the 14th of December, 2021. It showed clearly that myocarditis after an, uh, vaccination, in this case Moderna Dose 2, was higher than myocarditis after SARS-CoV infection for people 40 or younger. And then we have this data right here, where we can see, uh, let's see. Myocarditis for people 40 or younger. And then you have uh, that positive test. Okay. There we go. Yeah, throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks. His Twitter is loaded with sussy anti-vax aligned shit. Oh man, he's like big on Twitter. Jeez. These are the implications for vaccine mandates. Here are the implications of this thread on schools. It's threat. There's a type there's a typo here. Jesus. Be a professional. Logical consequence of health policy that takes seriously what Fauci is now saying. Retweeting some stuff. It's literally all just anti-vax stuff. This is all just, like, anti-vax stuff. Despite doing everything right, every person on the planet will be exposed to and infected with the virus. Testing without symptoms is no longer useful. Quarantining cohorts or class who feel fine is not useful. Disruptions are a self-inflicted wound. Get access to vaccine medical problems lowers the bad outcome. Or, I guess, anti-vaccine mandate. Any mask better than no mask is false. Anti-mask. Yeah, I, I think we know the grift. By the way, I just want to say, in terms of, um, in terms of, like, why here, you know, so 
often people talk about the logistics of disagreeing with mainstream perspectives on issues like this, you know? Basically, like 99% of scientists will say one thing on COVID, and then one guy who's a doctor will be like, actually, the vaccine is bad and COVID is fake, etc. And then when people, you know, rebut that, they're like, well, what, you're just anti-science because you disagree, okay? For me, an essential component in trusting scientists is political impartiality, okay? That is huge. If you take a look at all the scientists and researchers who are doing research on COVID-19, on the vaccines, okay, these are largely anonymous professionals who write their names in the papers. They don't have like social media profiles they use a bunch. They're committed to the science and their research and the messages they have are presented in the science. Now, Vinay Prasad over here, the doctor, has not, as far as I can tell, published any medical research on COVID. He's essentially blog posting about it from the perspective of a doctor, which is incredibly different, you know? There's a big difference between a doctor publishing peer-reviewed research on a subject and a doctor, uh, you know, blogging about it with the contrary opinion. You know, you can publish research if you want. Huh? Um, so that's critical to keep in mind. So the fact that this guy clearly has made a career off of political bias, because he, he's a doctor, but what he's talking about right here, calling, um, calling the COVID uh, vaccine mandates and lockdowns the beginning of Nazi Germany, that's not a medical opinion. That's an unhinged political opinion. And it, it, it's indicative of a person whose uh, biases are, are political and not medical. Does that make sense? You guys understand? So, because often there are people, they do this with climate change too, you know, where all the scientists will say one thing on climate change, and then one dude who is also a scientist will blog post the opposite opinion. People will be like, well, what about him? People did the same thing with Weinstein. Remember when they treated Weinstein like he was a COVID expert when he didn't even have like a degree in that field and he didn't publish any research on it? He was literally just like, just like posting on it. Jordan Peterson, same thing. Yeah, there's a critical difference here, you know? Um, so anyway, I just want to point that out. Scroll down a bit further. He retweeted, uh, Glenn Greenwald. Unsurprising. Yep, there we go. Just a reminder, the official position of the Biden administration is that it does not know what the origins of COVID are. Big tech, after a full year of banning discussions of the possibility of a lab leak, reversed itself and now allow it. Interesting new information here. Um... Wait, have people been getting banned for saying it might be a lab leak? Was that part of YouTube's TOS restrictions? They were? Um... I don't know how I feel about that. I think a lot of the lab leak discourse is really stupid, but it doesn't cause harm in the same way as like COVID or vaccine denialism, you know? Those aren't categorically the same thing. The lab leak stuff is bad politically, but even if you thought that it leaked from a lab, you could then go on to believe, uh, you know, all the other stuff about um, the necessity of fighting back against COVID and vaccines and stuff like that. Um, tweets were cited as missing context. Yeah, but were people banned over it? I don't know. It's just not very important to me. Um, anyway. So this was from this Nature Medicine paper. Let's see if we can find that chart. Myocarditis. Let's see. Number of excess events due to exposure per 1 million exposed as reported in Supplemental Table 10. When IRR did not show a significant number of incidents over the 1 to 28 days post-vaccine or SARS-CoV-2 positive test, absolute measures were not given. And then for myocarditis for 40 and under... You have first dose, second dose, SARS COVID positive test. I guess this might be the case specifically for the, um, for the, what is this, the Moderna vaccine? Possibly. Oh, but look, even in here, we have other information. While myocarditis can be life threatening, most vaccine associated myocarditis events have been mild and self limiting. 
The risk observed here in small and confined to the seven-day period following vaccination whereas the lifetime risk of morbidity and mortality following SARS-CoV-2 infection is substantial. Indeed, myocard uh, myocardial injury is very common in persons admitted to hospitals with COVID-19 when evaluated systemically using high-sensitivity cardiac troponin tests. Moreover, evidence of myocardial injury, irrespective of whether due to myocarditis or myocardial ischemia, is associated with higher risk of in-hospital death. We estimate the absolute number of excess myocarditis events in the past 28 days following the first dose of adenovirus mRNA is between 1 and 6 per million persons vaccinated, and the excess risk following the second dose is 10 per million. By contrast, we estimate 40 excess uh, cardioviditis cases per million 28 days following COVID-19. The risks are more evenly balanced in younger persons up to 40 years, where we estimated the excess in myocarditis events to be 10 per million, with the excess following second dose being 15 per million. Further research is required to understand why the risk of myocarditis seems to be higher following mRNA-1273 vaccine. Okay. So, uh, the, um, So you're following vaccination myocarditis, sensitivity analysis, restrictive use of yeah. So it seems like this might be for one of the vaccine types specifically, but it also says that the myocarditis is less severe when it's being done by the vaccine as opposed to being when it's being done by COVID. At the end of the day, this doesn't really matter. This is older information. We have newer information now. Um, and more severely, it's important to keep in mind that um, this information is being presented disingenuously, you know? If you take a look at the overall risk of health problems, death, injury, long COVID, associated with COVID versus vaccines, at every age group, COVID is worse, monumentally so. Joe Rogan fixated on the myocarditis specifically, an incredibly rare side effect. We're talking about a few per million, yeah, yeah, you're more likely to die in a car accident on the way to get the vaccine and get fucking myocarditis from it, okay? Um, hyper fixated on it because that's the scary talking point. Vaccines more likely to give you myocarditis than COVID itself, except the myocarditis is less severe and it's only for this one type of vaccine and it's only for people of this certain age group. And then recent data has shown even that's not true. It was never meant to be an honest attack on the vaccines to begin with. A dishonest framing, a hyper unrealistic scenario uh, thrown out there because it sounds scary. You guys understand? And that is why Joe Rogan is a cuck. Uh, he is a beta. He's beta. Uh, he's a, 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 a beta male. Beta. Uh, beta. And he needs to stop. Most popular media figure in the country.